So this is tuba that, and then I want to talk about kind of uh, messy. Okay, so let's go back to this circuit, right? Uh, even tuba itself, it has an oscillator because you see I need this AC pump, right? But uh, now we want to take a look at the mixer that, uh, that help us to get to uh, the correct frequency. So what is a mixer? Mixer basically is just a multiplier, okay? Mixer is nothing but just an analog multiplier. Okay, for example, if I have a pulse like this, and then I multiply this by a high frequency wave, it's easy to understand, right? Just when you are zero, then everything is zero. And then when you are one, then you just get this one. So basically, this is just like a modulation. So very often, this is, for example, this I can call this as a, it's not a good way. Let me call this AL, right? Like the oscill local oscillator, this high frequency one. It can be used to a certain magnitude times cosine omega LT, LOT, just a certain frequency. Let's say three gigahertz omega L, right? And then my signal, can be a sinusoidal wave or something general. I just call it S equal to A. Let me call this A1 cosine omega in T. Okay, I can have something like this, right? So if I, after multiplication, A times AL, right, the final signal, is going to be equals to a1 al cosine omega in t times cosine omega l o t right is that okay i just multiply them together and how do i do this multiplication i need some nonlinear elements for example dial right? and then just pass through them then the voltage the uh voltage this is dial oh yeah you, you will get some nonlinear term. Because it's not linear, then you get square term, cube term, and I do filter, I will only just get the lowest frequency one. Okay. This one equals to what? This one equals to, this is AL. A1, A0 divided by 2, cosine omega in minus omega LOT, plus cosine omega in plus omega L O T. So I do this, just want you to see that when you mix them together in the frequency domain, you actually create the two signal, the sum of two signal. One is has the frequency equals the difference of their signal. Another is the frequency equal to the sum of their signal, right? So imagine if they are very close, let's say this is, uh, uh, 900 megahertz, this is one gigahertz. Then you will get 1.9 gigahertz and also 0.1 gigahertz, right? So one very low frequency, one high frequency. And that is what it is talking about here. In a mixer, you have a, uh, you have an output maybe coming from the uh, machine, uh, the, uh, the pulse that you want to modulate, right? It can be, uh, then, then you will go through the mixer. The mixer take the signal and also a local oscillator. This old local oscillator just give you a sinusoidal pulse. Then you do the uh, multiplication. You will get a term that is omega one minus omega L or input minus the local oscillator frequency. Right, so let me be clear, right? For example, this is, uh, let's say 0 0.9 gigahertz. So it's, uh, this is one gigahertz. Then what will happen? Uh, so here is opposite to what we have because this is an RF system I got from Razavi's book. So the input has a higher frequency than this. So uh, maybe let me just change it. That might be better, right? Uh, let me just call this one gigahertz. 
This is 0 0.9 gigahertz. But it's the same in our quantum computer. We actually have a higher frequency in the local oscillator, right? So then this is what? This is one gigahertz. Because of the spectrum, you always have a negative frequency also. Just do the Fourier transform. We just take it for granted. And this is 0 0.9 gigahertz, right? So as a result, what do you get? You get a one, 0 0.1 gigahertz signal. And then you also get a 1.9 gigahertz signal. Okay, and then you apply a low pass filter to filter out this high frequency. Then you will get the desirable frequency that you want. But here is just an illustration of the RF circuit from here. Then what you do is you have a lower frequency and then you up convert to higher frequency for this local oscillator. And then you transmit to here and then you do the reading or probing of the qubit. Okay. In that case, would you have a high pass filter? No, it's still, uh, it, here I just swap the frequency range, right? So even, so what I'm doing is just maybe this move out, this move out. So you still want to keep the low frequency part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on, in this case, um, Actually, I don't know. I, I think they, 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 they have one here. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, I'm not very sure whether they filter it. Here is just a general RF circuit receiver. So, yeah. I mean, this one, if you have chance, you need to ask them. But, yeah. But basically, the main point here is just to tell you that you have a low frequency, then you up convert to a higher frequency. So, you will see a lot of local oscillator and mixer in this circuit. Yeah. So this is a little bit like RF, but it's good to go through, right? So what is the problem of the mixer? You see that I might have a frequency which is omega in here, and then the local frequency is here, but I might have a noise. This is basically the noise. The noise is neither at the image frequency. What does it mean? It means Omega L0 minus omega in equals to omega image minus omega L0. They have the equidistance to the local oscillator. So if that is the case, you know that they will give the same results after you uh, do the mixing, right? Because in the mixing, this mixing, you will get both omega L0 minus omega in, and also omega I in minus omega L0. And they are the same. Right, because we do have both positive and negative, right? So this will, or maybe to be more specific, because I already know the magnitude, I will get omega L0, minus omega in as this IF. And this one will also get this IF, right? Or basically it is what I'm saying in this equation. Then you are going to have the noise to disturb your desired signal. Uh, and this is in the frequency domain. Then it's got distorted, right? So what can you do? One possibility is how about we have zero intermediate frequency, which is the zero difference. How about let's just make the LO at the same place as the uh, signal. Then you will always get into zero. In this case, what it, it has is that omega IF1 equals to omega LO2, right? But unfortunately for some signal, they are not symmetric. If that is the case, when you just push them to the zero, you will mess up them together. Because again, you have two signals here. You, after you do the mixing, one is on the negative part, one is on the positive part, right? And this location is omega L minus omega in. When omega L U to omega in, these two is going to move closer to each other and eventually overlap. But if this is not a symmetric spectrum, then you will run into this problem. A lot important actually for this class. I want to see this. And the reason is that 
Then people come up with something called quadrature conversion, and which is used a lot in the quantum computing. That is what it does. I have this signal, right? I actually mix it with two out of phase signal. One is sine omega L, another is cosine omega L. So they are out of phase by 90 degree. Then you will get these two signals. One is called in phase, one is called quadrature phase, right? We don't go through the math. The point is that then you will have a better signal integrity, okay? So for example, this I got from the Bonjour from Keysight and Blue 4. This is a, a dilution refrigerator supplier. And you see that this is the mixer, this is the readout port, right? Um, and then, and then this this is the. I don't know where I put. It. Yeah, this is the readout port out of local oscillator. When your signal comes in, this is signal when you're reading. Then you will go through this IQ demodulation. Then you will get two parts of this, and to uh, and then that and then you will know what signal you are getting from when you read the qubit. Maybe this is the last page. So for example, here I use quantum dot as an example from this paper. Here you have a qubit. This qubit is biased. Uh, this is actually not the qubit. This is the nano wire. This, I think this is the nano wire. I actually I forgot what this is. But anyway, uh, this one form a LC circuit depends on the qubit spin up or down. It's going to change the effective capacitance of this circuit. I think this is the nano wire, but then it links to a qubit. But anyway, it's going to, if I spin up, you have a larger capacitance, spin down, you have a smaller capacitance, and then you change the resonance frequency of this guy. So what do they do? You see that I will generate a re reading signal from 4.2 Kelvin, and then you will go into here, and then you go to reflect back. This is microwave. When you reflect back, depending on the spin up or spin down, you have different delta C. And then this will go through the low noise amplifier, and then go through the mixer, go through the low pass filter to get the signal that we want just like here. This is the RF, right? So the signal, you can always decompose into two parts because your signal is defined by the frequency and also the phase. So you have two parameters. But detecting the phase is very difficult. So what we can do is you just go through the math, right? Cosine 2 pi ft plus 5 becomes cosine cosine minus sine sine. And uh, so this cosine phi, you can group them together. Then this A cosine phi becomes the I, and then the A sine phi becomes the Q. And then you do have two signals, do you see that? Right? So this uh, demodulation is like that. You just, you, you will be able to only look at this, the magnitude of the cosine part and the magnitude of the sine part. So if you plot in this, uh, plane, then you will see that there's a distribution, right? There's a relationship between Q and I. Remember, relationship between Q and I is the relationship between the phi. It's the relationship between cosine phi and psi phi, which is determined by how much phase shift you have due to the change of the capacitor. Okay? And based on their location, then you know whether it is zero or one. This is now. So I think, I, I don't know if I explained it well, maybe this was not prepared very well, but in summary, uh, final look at this uh, superconducting computer, uh, some of them are actually also used in other technology, not just superconducting uh, uh, quantum computer. Is that we recognize this is a microwave path, everything is microwave. We send out a signal, we use the mixer to bring it to a higher frequency or lower frequency. And then we probe it, and based on the scattering matrix, we read it by using this IQ uh, decomposition. Then we know whether it's zero or one, because uh, zero and one give different phase shift. And in this process, we need mixer, we need circulator, we need isolator. We also have this tuber. 
Yeah. A brief overview. Any questions? Yeah. So for this slide, like, uh, it's a circular, right? Yeah. So how uh, it can seek people? So this one come in, you will go here, yeah. and then you refresh, you will go here. It's not separate. It's a circulator. I did not. Uh, it's not isolated. It's circulator. Yeah. If we did not terminate it well, it might go back to here, yes. But we're supposed to terminate it well because here is where we are sensing the output. So here is where it comes to here. And then we demodulate it into in-phase and out-of-phase signal. It can go back. But of course, we need to do a good job to avoid it to go back. If we don't match it well, yeah, it can go back. Yeah. Okay, if no question, let's move to 